What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Truth Addiction. This is the channel that deals with the disease of addiction and all the ways it manifests itself. I am a recovering addict. My name is Brian. I suffer from a disease which is incurable, progressive, and it's unfortunately sometimes fatal. It can, however, be arrested at some point, and recovery is then possible. So I'm just trying to find out how's everybody doing today. Another day. It's hump day. I had a rough day at work. But when we choose to be clean, when we choose to recover, we also choose responsibility. And responsibility sucks, boys and girls. But, you know, it's something we got to do. Um, yeah, it's hot as hell. You know, I'm on the outskirts of Philadelphia, but I might as well be living in Zimbabwe or some shit, bro. Straight up. I'm looking out the window right now, and I swear I'm seeing, like, hippos and shit. There might be an elephant over there. I don't know what the fuck that is. But it's hot as shit. Anyway. Today, we're going to do the fourth video in this 12-part series corresponding to the 12 steps of a recovery program. Mine, as most of you know who've been watching, is Narcotics Anonymous. That's the, that's the fellowship I chose. It is the 12-step process that I chose to follow. And i just like to put that out this, or say this, every video I do, I'm not promoting Narcotics Anonymous, but I am, however, promoting 12-step programs. You know, things like Alcohol is anonymous, cocaine anonymous, gambling anonymous, sex and love anonymous. There's all kinds of 12-step programs for whatever ails you. Narcotics Anonymous just kind of goes, well, we just see it all as an addiction. So let's work on and heal from the addiction, period, right? And that's where I am. But I do believe, like I said before, that if I was to join, for instance, I was an opiate addict and everything else, alcohol, I mean, I got it in with everything, bro. I destroyed my life and those around me with everything. But I do believe that even a heroin addict or an alcoholic, you could have joined, I don't know, dude. You could have joined, I don't, do they have Shoppers Anonymous, bro, for people with shopping addictions? I don't know, they probably do. You could have joined that 12-step program. And as long as you follow the principles that are laid out in these steps, because they're all the same. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I believe you could have got clean or I could have stayed clean off of heroin in Shoppers Anonymous, if that's even a thing. But there's probably something relating to that. You see what I'm saying? So, let's get into this. Today is step four. I'm going to read... Step four from the Narcotics Anonymous basic text. I'm going to stop reading here and there <clears throat> and give you my experience on it. And this is for people who might be struggling out there and they're kind of coming to terms with, yo, I might have a problem, I might need some help. And they've heard about 12-step meetings, right? And it bugs them out a little bit, whether it's, you know, they think it's a cult, it's like a God thing, you know what I mean? Or they just think it won't work for them. You know, I've come across a lot of people like that. Those meetings don't work for everybody. You know, that kind of thing. And so it's for those people, man. You know, maybe you might want to try to go to a 12-step program. If you have the disease of addiction, I believe it is not just one way. I believe it is the only way for somebody with the disease of addiction to recover you understand what I'm saying? And what I mean by recover is we have to dig down deep and find out not about what we were using and the causes of it. We need to find out why we were doing this in the first place. We need to find out things about, you know, getting honest, being open-minded, learning how to surrender and accept some shit. Dig deep and find out about character defects, shortcomings. Let's talk about it. Let's write it down. Let's talk about the people we hurt. And let's make amends to those people. Let's develop a conscious contact with the God of our understanding. 
And when I say God, I simply mean good, orderly direction. God for you can mean whatever you want it to mean. See what I'm saying? But we got to put in some work. Because just staying clean or just staying off of whatever addiction we're having, it ain't good enough. We have to change. A true conversion of change must happen, right? And this is step four. And anybody in recovery who's been through step four and five, they kind of go together. But today we're on four. We'll tell you that this was the turning point in their recovery. All right? Let's get into it without further ado. Oh, and if you could, hit the like button for me, right? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and maybe hit that notification bell. Because I can't, I need you guys to help me carry the message, right? You know what I'm saying? We can all do this. Listen, we're at 100,000 OD deaths a year. 100,000, man. That's crazy. It was like 50,000, like 10, 15 years ago. We done doubled that shit. Just saying, I think this message needs to be carried. Here's my experience with step four. And if you could, leave me your experience in the comments. Maybe you could say something. And this one time, I'll hear it and go, oh, I never looked at it like that. You know what I mean? Because that's how shit works. All right, here we go. Step four. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. The purpose of a searching and fearless moral inventory is to sort through the confusion and the contradiction of our lives so that we can find out who we really are. We are starting a new way of life and need to be rid of the burdens and traps that controlled us and prevented our growth. Now right there, for most of us, it was the drugs, man, period. You know what I mean? Like waking up every day trying to figure out how to get some money or how to get one, who I got to lie to today, who I got to burn today, what family member am I going to strip of their trust today, whose hopes and dreams am I going to steal, along with maybe their wristwatch, you know what I'm saying? All that shit, man. They're all burdens, and they ended up being traps, and we can't grow like that when we're in that mode, bro, you know what I'm saying? As we approach this step, most of us are afraid that there is a monster inside of us that, if released, will destroy us. This fear can cause us to put off our inventory or may even prevent us from taking this crucial step at all. We have found that fear is a lack of faith. And we have found a loving, personal God to whom we can turn. We no longer need to be afraid. Listen, let me tell you something. When I finally surrender to the fact that, yo, I have the disease of addiction, bro. I just, I don't got a moral dilemma, right? Because I thought I did. I really thought I was a piece of shit. I really thought all that, man. But when I, when I came to terms and accepted it and surrendered to it, and I started to see, like, yo, through coming to these meetings... I'm getting hope because I'm seeing other people just like me stay clean. And then I and went and said, you know what? Okay, I'm going to turn my will and my life over to this program because I see it working. And when I was able to do that, man, and develop a conscious contact with the God of my understanding. You see what I'm saying? My understanding. It don't got to be no deity. It's the God of your understanding. Whatever good orderly direction you want to wherever you want to take that from there you go right but when i was able to do that the fear was released you see what i'm saying and faith kicked in like it just said fear is nothing but a lack of faith for real for real man all right we have been experts at self-deception and rationalization <sighs> fuck yeah we have by writing our inventory, we can overcome these obstacles. A written inventory will unlock parts of our subconscious that remain hidden when we simply think about or talk about who we are. Once it is all down on paper, it is much easier to see and much harder to deny our true nature. Honest self-assessment is one of the keys to our new way of life. Let me tell you how powerful it is when you sit down with a pen and some paper and you start writing on these steps. 
that's what we call it, right? When you get on a step, I go off what they call a step working guide with my sponsor. And in there, the, the, the guide, it's a guide that asks you questions. And it, just, it, it helps you to open your mind up and to really start, like, seeing who you are and the things you did and all that stuff, right? But it's right, man. It's one thing to sit there and think about it. But when you sit there and put that ink to the paper and you write it, now it's like set in stone. You can't get away from it. So as you're writing it, you read it back to yourself. and then, Or when you finally go over what you wrote with your sponsor, bro, the healing that takes place is crazy. Believe me when I tell you, it seems, it don't seem possible that just writing some shit down like that and having it in your face, like the power in that, but it is, it's powerful. And it's how we change. It's how we recover, man. Let's face it. When we were using, we were not honest with ourselves. We are becoming honest with ourselves. When we admit that addiction has, a, has defeated us and that we need help. It took a long time to admit that we were beaten. We found that we do not recover physically, mentally, or spiritually overnight. Because after all, right, listen, that's what the disease of addiction is. It's a three-part disease. It's we suffer mentally, physically, and spiritually. You understand what I'm saying? And those things can't be changed just, you know, you don't start to recover. You don't walk into one meeting and be like, oh, okay, shit, now I'm good, right? Or you don't just stay off drugs or whatever it is you're fucking addicted to for one month, couple months, shit, even a year, and think that, like, yo, now I'm good and I can stop doing what I was doing to change. It don't make no sense, right? It's just crazy. It's, it's like this old thing. My, my buddy used to say it all the time to me, man. Hey, you know, you can't expect to walk 100 miles into the middle of the forest and walk back out in five miles. And when I heard that, it was like, okay, that's, that's a simple way as to put it. Okay, I get it. Like, in other words, this shit's going to take time, man. This shit was just talking about we, we had to learn how to become honest. Who the fuck got to learn how to be honest? We do. Because all we did was lie to ourselves and to those around us for so long, man. Shit, to this day, I guarantee you, I still think that something happened that didn't even happen. But yet I live my life by it. You feel what I'm saying? But it was a lie that I, that I made into the truth. I got a lie, and I crafted that motherfucker till it was the truth. We got to undo some of this shit. We got to unpack this shit. And that's what this step is going. All right? Most of us find that we were neither as terrible nor as wonderful as we suppose we were. We are surprised to find that we have good points in our inventory. Anyone who has some time in the program and has worked this step will tell you that the fourth step was a turning point in their life. I just said that shit. I mean, that just happens to be because, you know, I worked this motherfucking step. That's why. You know what I mean? I didn't just, you know. I don't just guess this shit, bro. Everything I say on here was learned because I was willing to do so. Right? Some of us make this mistake of approaching the fourth step as if we were, if, if it was a confession of how horrible we are. What a bad person we have been. In this new way of life, a binge of emotional sorrow can be dangerous. This is not the purpose of the fourth step. We are trying to free ourselves of living in old, useless patterns. We take the fourth step to grow and to gain strength and insight. We may approach the fourth step in a number of ways. To have the faith and courage to write a fearless inventory. Step one, two, and three are the necessary preparation. It is advisable that before we start, we go over the first three steps with a sponsor. We get comfortable with our understanding of these steps. We allow ourselves the privilege of feeling good about we, what we are doing. We have been thrashing about for a long time 
and have gotten nowhere. Now we start the fourth step and let go of fear. We simply put it on paper to the best of our present ability. In other words, this ain't a game show, Holmes. You ain't trying to get the right answer. You're just trying to give your answer. Let's, let's just talk about us. Who are you? That's what we're here to do. Right? In a fearless manner. Not no beat around the bush shit. No. Write that shit down. What the fuck did you do to somebody? What did you do to people? How'd you treat them? How'd you burn them? Shit. What did people do to you? Huh? What's that guilt and that fucking remorse you got inside of you for? Shit, is that guilt even real? You know, because there is imagined guilt. See, like, I can really get into this shit right now. I'm trying to do like an introductory kind of thing here. I don't really want to fucking go that deep. But you know what I'm saying, right? Might not make sense right now if you're new to this. But keep going. Keep writing, fool. You know what I'm saying? So dig this. We get comfortable with our understanding of these steps. Oh, I just read that. My fault. My bad. We must be done with the past, not cling to it. We want to look our past in the face, see it for what it really was, and release it so we can live today. The past, for most of us, has been a ghost in the closet. We have been afraid to open that closet for fear of what the ghost may do to us. You ain't bullshitting, book. This book ain't bullshitting. Who the fuck wants to open up the closet? Hmm? Who got the courage to open up the closet? I'm going to tell you right now. You ain't going to do it while you're using. Nobody wants to open You ain't shit. That's the whole reason you're using. That's a little insight. The exact nature of why you're using is so you don't think about that closet or the ghost in the motherfucker, bro. It's all about... I don't want to feel. I don't want to deal. Give me another one. We do not have to look at the past alone. Our wills and our lives are now in the hands of our higher power. Writing a thorough and honest inventory seemed impossible. It was, it was as long as we were operating under our own power. We take a few quiet moments before writing and ask for the strength to be fearless and thorough. In step four, we begin, begin to get in touch with ourselves. We write about our liabilities, such as guilt, shame, remorse, self-pity, resentment, anger, depression, frustration, confusion, loneliness, anxiety, betrayal, hopelessness, Failure, fear, and denial. Does that shit sound familiar? We write about the things that bother us here and now. We have a tendency to think negatively. So putting it on paper gives us a chance to look more positively at what is happening. Assets must also be considered. If we were to get an accurate and complete picture of ourselves, this is very difficult for most of us because it is hard to accept that we have good qualities. However, we all have assets, many of them newly found in the program, in the 12 step program that you, if you do, you join, man. Right? That's what it meant. Like I said, mine is narcotics and numbers. That's what it means about program. But it could be any 12-step program you want it to be as far as I'm fucking concerned. You know what I mean? Newly found in the program, such as being clean, open-mindedness, God-awareness, honesty with others, acceptance, positive action, sharing, willingness, courage, faith, caring, gratitude, kindness, and generosity. You see what it did right there? It gave you all those words before about like guilt, shame, and all that shit. And then it kind of just gave you all the words that counteract all that shit. Anxiety, fear, denial, all that shit. 
Open your motherfucking brains, baby. Open your ears to let the info into your brains. Because if you like me, your brain is fucked up as it is. Shit. I got a disease, man. What you got? Also, our inventories usually include material on relationships. Boy, do they. Shit. Don't get me motherfucking started in relationships. God damn. Hey, man. Let me tell you something, bro. I got this saying I say. There's a thin line between love and dope. You feel me? Because listen. A relationship could be just as dangerous as a motherfucking bag of heroin. Shit. Man, listen. I remember thinking that I wasn't really, that, that the person I was with really didn't love me unless they punched me in the face or they stabbed me with a fork at the dinner table. I love you, baby. Let's talk about it, right? Four step. We review our past performances and our present behavior to see what we want to keep and what we want to discard. No one is forcing us to give up our misery. This step has the reputation of being difficult. In reality, it is quite simple. We write our inventory without considering the fifth step. And like I said, we'll get to the fifth step. But what it's basically saying is, see, on your fifth step is where everything you wrote down, you share it with yourself, the God of your understanding, and your sponsor. Right? So this thing is saying, hey, don't be a bitch. Get honest. Write all that shit down. Don't worry about the fact you gotta tell another man, or if you're a woman, you got a woman sponsor, you gotta find you gotta tell another woman all that shit. Don't worry about that right now. Just write this shit. That's what it's talking about. We work step four as if there were no step five. We can write alone or near other people. Whatever is more comfortable to the writer is fine. We can write as long or as short as we need to. Someone with experience can help. The important thing is to write a moral inventory. If the word moral bothers us, we may call it a positive negative inventory. Whatever you need to do. The way to write an inventory is to write it. That's what it says. With a motherfucking exclamation point. The way to do it is do it, motherfucker. Do it. I can't tell you how many, I've been around for a little bit, man. I can't tell you how many motherfuckers I came in, that I seen come in here. Thought they could just stay clean and go to a couple meetings and not touch no step work. Maybe they got the step one and they was out. Maybe they did got the two and they was out. A lot of them I see do the one, two, three shuffle, boy. They get to that four step. They dance their ass right the fuck ain't no crack house, baby. Fuck all that. I ain't writing that shit. I ain't, get, I ain't shit. I ain't trying to change. I ain't trying to change. Thinking about an inventory, talking about it, theorizing about the inventory will not get it written. No bullshit. Right? That goes back to that making a decision type of shit. How decision only implies action. It's not an actual action. You just decide. Hey, I'm, I decided to write a four step. That don't mean you wrote it, motherfucker. Feel what I'm saying? We sit down with a notebook, ask for guidance, pick up our pen, and start writing. Anything we can think about is inventory material. When we realize how little we have to lose and how much we have to gain, we begin this step. The basic rule of thumb is that we can write too little. Yet we can never write too much. The inventory will fit the individual. Perhaps this seems difficult or painful. And it is, yo. I ain't gonna lie, man. When I worked my four step, man, it sucked, bro. It sucks looking at yourself and looking looking this shit that you did to people, man. Like I fucked my kids over, man. Like, yo, it's crazy, man, when you when you Drugs overrun everything that is good in your life, bro. It's nutty. 
Like people out there, man, they don't, so, you know, a lot of people don't understand, and it's cool that they don't understand. They look at us like drug addicts, like, you know what, you would stop if you wanted to. You know what I mean? You want to do that. Like, they just don't get it. Like, nah, motherfucker, no, I really didn't want to do it. Maybe in the beginning I wanted to get high. It was fun. But yo, man, the last, like, two, three years of getting high, man, that shit was not fun, dude. It was like every day wanting to stop, knowing I was hurting myself and those around me. And I couldn't fucking stop, dude. I couldn't surrender to it. I just kept coming up with these goofy ass ways that I was going to get out of it. I'll just use one bag today instead of ten. Instead of using heroin, I'll just have a Miller Light. Instead of having a Miller Light, I'll just have a joint. It was crazy, bro. None of that shit worked. Don't get me motherfucking started, man. It may, it may even appear impossible. We may fear that being in touch with our feelings will trigger an overwhelming chain reaction of pain and panic. And it may, bro. It may. But keep going. Keep fucking going. We may feel like avoiding an inventory because of a fear of failure. When we ignore our feelings, the tension becomes too much for us. The fear of impending doom is so great that it overrides our fear of failure. Damn. Let me read that again. Hold on, hold on. The fear of impending doom is so great that it overrides our fear of failure. You better hope it does. You better keep writing. Keep fucking writing. An inventory becomes a relief because the pain of doing it is less than the pain of not doing it. We learn that pain can be a motivating factor in recovery. Yes, the fucking can. Pain can be a motivating factor in anything in life, boy. Most human beings, fuck just addicts. See, I got the disease of addiction. So whatever a normal human thing is, I got it like to the fucking second power. Whatever the fuck. I don't really know math. Fifth power, tenth power. Whatever it is. My shit is worse than a regular human. But even regular human beings that roam the earth, bro. They like, it's like people got to be kind of like backed into a corner before they do anything, really. Everybody just wants to be comfortable. Nobody wants to be uncomfortable. And it usually is that uncomfortable shit that makes us grow. It's fucked up, but that's the way it is, man. We learn that pain can be a motivating factor in recovery. Thus facing it becomes unavoidable. Every topic of step meeting seems to be on the fourth step or doing a daily inventory. Through the inventory process, we are able to deal with all the things that can build up. The more we live our program, the more God seems to put us in positions where issues surface. That's fucked up, but that's true, man. <laughs> God seems to put us in positions where issues surface, man. Hey. Now, when I look at that, I'm just looking at life just doesn't, right? Because, I, don't, you know, I don't pull no punches. I'm an atheist. I'm not a religious person. But I do, I respect religions. I do. My sponsor's religious, right? But when I look at that, man, it's crazy how life seems to just put you in some motherfucking positions, man. No matter, like, how good you're... Like, you can be always the person doing the next right thing, and shitty things still happen, right? But it's crazy how... Something that seems bad or an impossible situation at the time, and it seems real shitty to you, right? You're like, this is fucked up. You know... You don't see the growth that's going to come from it, right? Sometimes God's will looks like ass when it's happening. You, know, you be looking, God, what the fuck? What the fuck is this, God? What? You know what I mean? But then, like, you fast forward, and you get through that situation. You learn some things. You learn what to do, what not to do along the way. 
You learn to cope with your feelings. You experience pain. You experience joy. And through that, you stay clean too. And when you get to the other side of the issue, boy, have you grown. The growth is crazy. It's crazy, man. When issues surface, we write about them. We begin enjoying our recovery because we have a way to resolve shame, guilt, and resentment. The stress once trapped inside of us is released. Writing will lift the lid off the pressure cooker. We decide whether we want to serve it up, put the lid back on it, or throw it away. We no longer have to stew in it. Hey, man, you know what? Whoever wrote this shit like a hundred years ago, bro, these motherfuckers were like poets, bro. Listen to this shit again. Hold on. We decide whether we want to serve it up, put the lid back on it, or throw it out because we no longer have to stew in it. We sit down with paper and a pen and ask God, God's help in revealing the defects that are causing pain and suffering. We pray for the courage to be fearless and thorough and that this inventory may help us to put our lives in order. When we pray and take certain action, it always goes better for us. We are not going to be perfect. If we were perfect, we would not be human. The important thing is that we do our best. We use the tools available to us and we develop the ability to survive our emotions. It's like this. It's like this, people. Stop worrying about what you got to do and how you got to live to survive the world. Start worrying about what you got to do to survive yourself. This shit ain't about surviving the world. This is about surviving yourself. Because what is life anyway? It's just how you react to it. Right? This shit is crazy, man. We do not want to lose any of what we have gained. We want to continue in the program. It is our experience that no matter how searching and thorough, no inventory is of any lasting effect unless it is promptly filed, followed by an equally thorough fifth step. In other words... Keep going, motherfucker. Just keep going. This disease is incurable. Trust me. It's incurable. And it needs treatment on a daily basis, man. You will never just be good. You'll never be good. And I, I mean like this. Just look at it like this. Let's say you got a you 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 have a rash that comes if, if you break out in this rash right, and when it breaks out you itch the fuck out of it's all red right. You go to the doctor, the doctor gives you cream. You put the cream on, it takes the rash right off, right? You good, no itching, no scratching. The rash is there, right? The rash ain't there, and then the rash comes like not going on, not staying in the process. It's kind of like the rash comes back. And you sitting there with the cream, sitting there just scratching and not putting the cream on when it's right there. It's insane is what it is. And that is what the disease of addiction is in a nutshell. It's a bunch of insanity. Anyway, that was the last line of that. I appreciate if you stuck around and listened to this. I hope you got something out of that. And I'm going to end this video like I end all the videos, just remember this. The disease of addiction is broad, and it's outside of the realm of just using drugs. Keep coming back. More will be revealed. I'm out of here, man.